Greetings everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Alex here, and in today's video we have a topic, right? We have a topic, we have an article, this is what a flight attendant first notices about you. We're actually talking about an article that's written very recent, and uh, here it is. So let's see, from Reader's Digest, a trusted friend in a complicated world, that's what they say. Well, let's see. So as you go inside the aircraft as a passenger, there are some things that flight attendants can notice about you. The first thing that this article says it was shoes are you wearing, which I find quite weird because I never really looked at that as a as a cabin crew. I never really stared down at passengers feet like it's it's a bit weird, right? I don't do that. <laughs> so let's see. They say it's not because they have an obsession for the shoes is because they always look at what kind of shoes a customer is wearing to determine whether they can run quickly and easily in them. So what they're referring here is actually about an emergency evacuation. In case you have an emergency evacuation, you have to evacuate the aircraft and in turn that means you need a bit of a footwork, right? And in order to do that, high heels, it's not really an advantage. So I will say for all the passengers out there, I'll definitely recommend you not to wear high heels on your flights just because of this reason. In case of emergency, it'll make it will make it more difficult to vacate the aircraft, to go out of the aircraft. But anyways, it's not something that I personally look at, at least not during boarding, because there's other things that I must take into consideration. Another thing when it comes to the shoes, they also look out for passengers walking around the cabin or going into the lavatory without shoes, because we know how dirty the floor is. So basically this is a subject of gossip. And that may be true to some extent. Uh, sometimes we do see passengers are walking barefoot in the aircraft, which is not really... I wouldn't recommend it because it's basically a public space and of course it's not gonna be the cleanest. Everybody else is walking in shoes there, right? Now the next point from the article is what clothing you're wearing. If you notice flight attendants scanning you up and down, chances are they're observing your clothing and accessory choices. You'd be surprised in what people wear, so basically it's another um, subject of gossip, I guess. I don't really care, I don't really look at that, I always do appreciate though people that dress up nicely, but at the same time indeed you don't want to be having uncomfortable clothes during a long flight, you know, you just want to be comfy as a passenger, so, so definitely go for something more comfortable. Okay, the next point, what do we notice about our passengers? How friendly you are! When you step onto the plane, you're usually giving off some kind of energy and flight attendants are in a unique position to observe it as they welcome passengers. On the other hand, avoiding eye contact or exhibiting erratic or aggressive behavior will immediately raise red flags. I agree with that, that's true, I mean we always are on the lookout for possible signs that might lead to disruptive behavior that can maybe endanger the flight in some ways. Alright, now this is a big one, the state of your carry-ons. <laughs> We must ensure that you're sticking to the rules of the plane. Flight attendants are the last line of defense against passengers who might try to board the plane with too many bags or luggage. Too big to be a carry-on. Now many people might ask, do we actually need to help our passengers during boarding with their luggage? Well, it's up to the individual cabin crew. For example, in my case, if I see somebody that's a bit elderly, right, it's a, or it's a person that's a bit short, I will always help them put luggage in the overhead bins because I'm a nice person, I'm a nice individual, I'm a nice cabin crew, but it's not mandatory for the cabin crews to put the luggage in the overhead bins. It's not mandatory, we just do it out of courtesy and because we're nice. Alright, something else we notice, whether you're distracted. Okay, okay. We look to see if a passenger is texting or talking on their phone and holding up the boarding process. Yeah, that might be true, you know, that might be a, a thing. Okay, the next one, how fit you are. So this is about safety, this is 100% about safety because oftentimes in case of emergency you need able-bodied passengers, people that can actually help you, people that can help you deplane the aircraft, people that can help you in an emergency situation and usually we place those people by the, um, by the doors, in the close proximity, in the vicinity of the doors so they can actually provide some help in case of emergency. 
In the same bracket, I guess doctors and medical personnel uh, can, can help. They are called medical volunteers. If you ever had some flights, we sometimes can call a medical volunteer on board in case we have a medical emergency. So that's a different topic. But uh, anyway, let's get back to our um, article. All right, so if you are intoxicated, and this is a really good one, it's a big one had a few too many before boarding, your flight attendant will likely pick up on that quickly if someone boarding a plane seems like they may be drunk and disruptive or wasted and aggressive. It's important for a flight attendant to sniff out the signs right when the passenger boards the plane so they can make the measures to avoid conflict. Oftentimes, in those cases, the flight attendants can request the captain to offload said passenger so that passenger will actually not be flying for the safety of the flight especially. So, uh, <laughs> word of advice for passengers, don't get wasted before a flight because you might get into trouble. But at the same time, if you have control over your behavior while you drink, you can drink as much as you want. So, it really depends on the individual. But uh, yeah. As they say here, if a passenger is visibly intoxicated, they can be removed from the flight. So that is something I keep an eye out for. Yes, indeed. We all do as flight attendants keep an eye on this. The flight attendant also points out that you're not allowed to bring your own alcohol on the aircrafts. That is a rule. That's a rule on most airlines. I think all the airlines actually. All right, the next one. Whether you need special assistance or extra attention. I want to make sure that whoever needs special assistance is taken care of, of course, and this is also the category of people with certain disabilities or elderly who might uh, struggle with, uh, with walking or so on and so forth. We are always there to give a hand and to help them board and, you know, to take care of all of their, their boarding passes, documents and so on and so forth. We have to take a look at those particular situations. Flight attendants are also keenly aware of passengers who don't have obvious needs but still ask for accommodations. Sometimes we've already noticed them at the gate talking to the agent or they come on asking for special treatment or complaining. Um, I mean, that can be the case, you know, everybody's different and obviously some uh, people, they do have special requests and probably if everything is fine, you know, we try to accommodate those requests as flight attendants. Uh, in first class, we notice the ones trying to catch our attention because they want their coat hung right away, even when it's difficult to get to during boarding. That's that's a very interesting topic because I work in premium class and it happens to me quite often. If uh, uh, business class passengers, they give me their coats to hang, but I'm busy doing boarding or other things on the aircraft. So I either politely say that I will take care of it later or I just ask one of my colleagues to um, stay at the door so that I can carry on with this task. So it really depends. You can always uh, get around those kind of situations and you can always ask for help for your from your colleagues at least especially on the Boeing 787 or the 777 or, you know, the bigger jets, we have space to move around. Another one that they talk about right here is the status of your pet. Now, to be honest, I don't have much experience with that. Um, I haven't really had pets on my flights, but I have friends that they had pets on their flights. And yeah, it's, it's not a big deal, but you do have to keep an eye on them. Another one right here is whether you are looking sick. And this comes back to what I was saying earlier. Oftentimes, especially on uh, long flights and on ultra long flights, we will have uh, medical cases. This can range from fainting uh, to seizures, God forbid, asthma attacks, all kind of all kind of things, uh, allergies, um, vomiting, diarrhea. So we have to take care of uh, those situations. We have to act accordingly with our SOPs, you know, with our manual and treat the passengers in a certain way. Now we can ask for medical advice from down on the ground and we do that quite often in those situations, but mostly we have medicine to counteract any issues on board. We do have to be careful during boarding to notice any passengers that might look sick, so then we can ask and uh, get more info about any conditions that they might have, so we are better prepared once we are flying, basically. It can happen on any flight, um, and it's not fun to happen at 39,000 feet whilst in the air in a metal tube flying across the Atlantic. So, 
yeah, it's best to avoid. I would advise any passengers, obviously, if they don't feel well and fit for the flight, try to delay your flight, not to fly on that particular day. But obviously, you know, it's it's not it's not easy to rearrange your flight. So yeah, we are prepared to deal with it, but we're rather not to, obviously. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents. This has been it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as you guys have seen, I can relate to this article. Very good article because, because most of what it says is true. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this article and please do like the video, smash that like button and comment on the video. Interactions are welcomed for the algorithm. And uh, yeah, until next time, ladies and gents, bye bye. Take care, see you later.